Um, appointed CEO of Royal Mail back in May uh, 2010, uh, only two short years ago. And it was clearly, uh, at the time, an organization in need of fundamental change. What were your initial priorities? First, I had to figure out um, how to put uh, some financial stability underneath mm -hmm. the company quickly. And uh, that very immediately brought me face to face with the need for a wholesale regulatory reform because uh, the company had not been successful for a very long time. It had been cash negative then four years in a row and it could not be successful if we couldn't uh, completely uh, get out of the stranglehold of the regulatory approach mm -hmm. that had been taken. Establishing some sort of overall vision for where you're heading in the long term, is, is that something that comes later or does it need to be put in place early on in the process? In the Royal Mail, within six months, uh, we really knew uh, that we had to do three things. We had to review all of our products and services and all of our op operations to be brilliant at the basics. The second thing you have to have is a really strong commercial DNA. And if you've been government owned for many years, and if every aspect of your business has been regulated, so it's kind of been run by remote control, mm -hmm. um, then importing a commercial DNA into the company uh, is not something that's going to happen overnight. Now you're in a position to start growing the business and to look at, oh, where do I have competitive advantage? What is it about this operation, this brand, um, the trust that people have in this company that makes us the best. In which areas can that be said to be true? And I think for us, we are going to really benefit from our 35% share of the parcel and packet business. E-retailing is exploding in the UK. To what extent would you say we, we have the people and it's more about leveraging what we have and adapting culture versus a need to, to bring on more people from the outside. I think we have in our company some of the greatest people in the logistics business anywhere. Um, but if you're going to capitalize on growth and the growth is going to occur in new areas, now you have to import new skills mm -hmm. to help you leverage what you have. Direct marketing is a perfectly good example. We have been terrific at delivering direct marketing materials. But now we want to add value. We want to capitalize on the data that we have so that our return on marketing spend can continue to go up and up. So now we need to import an advertising mentality into our direct marketing offer. In your experience, embarking on a significant transformation, how important is it to change the organizational structure and parts of the leadership team? If you have the right people, mm -hmm. you can overcome organizational uh, problems. But if you don't have the right people, then the fact that your organization is brilliant, it's, it's not going to get yes. you there. Yes. Uh, but that said, organizations need to be at least sufficiently tidy where you know, people can understand um, how they report up in a large organization. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, senior people can understand what exactly am I responsible for. The organization at a certain level has to um, signal what you think is very important for the next three or four years. We had to put the customer in a position in the Royal Mail so that it became a part of every conversation that we had at the management table and, and actually throughout the whole organization. And then ultimately the role of the CEO, when do you engage, when do you hold back in this kind of a process? Well, you know, if you're running out of cash, uh, you, you better be engaged uh, and uh, you, you better figure out very quickly, uh, you know, what do I have to do with the supply base, with every expenditure in the company, with our pricing, with our shareholder, with our customers, what do I have to do to make sure I don't hit a wall? In strategy, the, the CEO um, can set a course as to how and set a, a course as to time frames and can uh, empower the organization to see the urgency in coming to a point. But you can't speak for all 160,000 people in the company. You have a very particular challenge in that one or two of your businesses for the foreseeable future will have to manage f to take costs down because volumes are coming down. And then on the other hand you have some high growth businesses. How, as a CEO and as an organization, are you managing 
to do both. Taking cost out of the traditional business is really about automating it, modernizing it. What did I have to do? Well, I had to be out in the field and take the temperature of our people out there and understand how much change they can cope with at an, any given point in time, try to calibrate the plan so that we are successful in taking cost out, but we're not uh, so mindless uh, on how hard this is on our people that we just get nothing done. You yes. know, people just dig in their heels and they just say, stop. So I would expect most transformations, uh, you know, you'll go through waves, as it were. Uh, mm -hmm. There will be some ups and downs. How to, to ensure that the, the motivation and the confidence in the organization and among your employees uh, stay high throughout this, this journey? I would say it's really two things. Massive internal communications effort mm -hmm. at all levels that you know, was not really part of the personality of the Royal Mail. You know, for a communications company, yes. I have to say that the internal communications of the Royal Mail was a little bit surprising to me. Mm -hmm. There wasn't very much of it. And then secondly, I think the reward system has to be aligned for the goals that you are trying to achieve. My scorecard should be the same as the scorecard of the person who's out delivering the mail. So that we're all on the same page and we're all watching the same things. The other thing about, you know, reward systems that are aligned to scorecards, um, and especially scorecards that go top to bottom mm -hmm. inside an organization, is that it helps to change the conversation in the organization. I would say this company had a pretty uh, bad legacy of industrial relations. If you're going to change that, you need to change the conversation, and the conversation needs to be more aligned with what it takes to be successful to look outside yourself, look outside the delivery office to what the competition is doing, to what the customer wants the Royal Mail to do. If you were to compare what you and your team are currently doing at Royal Mail with the process you went through at Canada Post, uh, what are the key differences? You know, Canada Post is a very big company in Canada. It's probably the sixth largest company in Canada. Uh, <coughs> but this is on a much bigger scale. Historically, this is a treasured institution in Great Britain. This is the company that taught the whole world how to do this business. It's been in financial difficulty for a very long time. But even with that, it has managed to retain um, the love of uh, you know, the British people. So as you look into the 21st century and the new challenges business will be facing, how will it impact CEOs and how they need to do their jobs? I never heard, in all my years in investment banking, I never heard anybody say about anything we were doing at the time, and so this is 100 years ago now, this is 1995, right, before any of this. Mm. I never heard anyone ever say, but is that the right thing to do? I never, ever heard that question. And I think uh, increasingly CEOs and management teams and all down the organization we're always going to have to be asking ourselves, but is it the right thing? Are we doing right mm -hmm. by our customers, by our suppliers? Are we a good partner? Yes. Have we been fair? If, if you could give one piece of advice uh, to a new CEO coming into a company and having to lead a significant transformation, what would it be? Make sure you're up for it because it's not a 50-hour-a-week you know, a week job. Try to get your arms around the full parameters of what you have to deal with as quickly as possible. So talk to lots of people, go up, go down, go out, go, go see as many of your own people, go talk to them in small groups, in big groups. You, you really have to understand that social media has changed everything about what our people think every minute of the day about our company and they're either going to be great ambassadors for your company or they're going to be detractors and the you know, points of detraction are not just going to be water cooler conversations they're going to be conversations that go across the globe in a nanosecond so on that note thank you very much for sharing uh, your perspectives and taking the time it was a pleasure thank you